Thanks for tuning back in. For those precious few of you who do subscribe and watch my videos, I appreciate your time. Thank you for tuning in. For those of you who are new to the channel, thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Make your voice heard in the comments below, and make sure to hit the bell notification if you like what you see here to get updates on new videos. So what you see on display here is from Armored Core. It's the 04 Ray Leonard Alicia White Pearl version. It's manufactured by Kotobukiya 2011 or so. And this is my first fully finished kit. By fully finished, I mean it's been panel scribed by those chisels that you've seen in my previous tutorial. It's also been slightly modified in the collars around the knees and the ankles. I've also added my own detailing to imply screws as well as airbrushing, pre-shading, highlighting, dry brush weathering, top coating, and painting in the details that are raised and also panel lining and adding custom decals since this kit doesn't come with a schematic for decals by default. I hope you guys like what you see here. I hope to hear your feedback in the comments. Don't hesitate to speak up if you have suggestions on the kit, little things that you would change. I'm looking for any feedback since I am a beginner. I'd like to do a few things with this video. First, I suppose to review the process that I followed in order to get this footage and also to introduce myself to you guys since I started this channel out of the blue and you really uh, don't know what's going on with the channel I suppose it's all very uh, in a vacuum so I'd like to provide some context suppose a story for you to be able to follow the progress of this channel so in order to capture the footage that you see here I hope you guys enjoy it uh, what I did was I purchased off of Amazon what's called an auto dolly. It's a little uh, remote control dolly on three wheels that you can adjust to get provide for you guys a, a circling shot since I, I feel maybe I'm wrong here. Uh, the turntables that most YouTubers use is, is fine, but I really like the, the cinematic effect of circling the model in question, having you, the viewer, moving around. And so it's very fun and dynamic to view the model in this way. Lighting I feel here is not very good. Definitely need more light and um, I'll try my best to get more of that to get a, a better video out for you guys. But in any case what I set up is a pentagon of black poster boards taped together on their backs and all of this is placed on top of a glass table with black butcher paper taped underneath to keep light from getting in. And the mech itself is not sitting on top of that black paper. It's actually I've cut out in the center of all that black paper. I've cut out a little rectangle and taped underneath it a, a white paper towel. The model can be lit from underneath at least somewhat. In the future, try to flood the area with four overhead lamps and hope that that reflects enough light in order to light the bottom rather than depend upon that underlighting there. Now, the purpose that the black surrounding background serves is it's a nice, even color so that in post-processing, all you need to do in DaVinci Resolve, which is the program that was used for this video, is raise the black levels. And what that does is it makes the background, at least where light is not close to it, uh, almost a uniform black. And if you check the description down below, there's posted some pictures taken with a DSLR. You'll notice in those pictures that the black background is very uniform and that was only able to be done because the background was draped over by a black hoodie. So even though it wasn't a perfectly uniform black field before post-processing, because it was mostly the same color, it's much easier to even out. So that's the idea here with the black poster boards surrounding the model. It makes it much easier to even out so that the mech itself pops and the background doesn't distract. Now, since raising the black levels enriches the colors, then the saturation needs to be turned down, and it was for this video. Additionally, the overall picture gets darker, and the places where the light hits the mech tend to get dampened. So I also raised the highlight level. Once again, you guys, thank you for watching this video. A gentle reminder, don't forget to like, comment, and if you haven't already, to subscribe. And if you subscribe, make sure to hit that bell notification so you get updates when new videos come out. And I suppose that leads me into to how I got here, making these videos for you guys and these models that I feel compelled to share. I don't know what's up with that, but it's super engaging. And I hope you guys enjoy the steps, those of you who decide to stay.
Now, before we start here though, I'd be curious to know what your first kit was. Some of us here, we've had conversations on the Gunpla Reddit about which kits we're working on at the moment. If you could chime in and share with us what your first snap build experience was like and what that first memory was for you. I know, for example, that the first subscriber to this channel, the Big Bient, sorry if I mispronounced that, Bigs, but uh, <laughs> uh, he's the, the conversation that we had on Reddit, he, he revealed that he's working on an epic kit for his first one. He's going all out as well. He's going all in with the scribing and the painting. He's working on the uh, the Dark Matter Exia Anchoret uh, conversion kit, which is just, oh, that's that's a strong start. So best, best wishes to him. It's always great to hear about other people's projects and be part of this community. So if there's something that you're proud of that you're working on right now and that you have finished, feel free to share. So a bit of background. The very first gunplug kit that I snapped was the uh, it was the Double O Riser. I had gone on a, a family trip to Korea back in 2011, and um, while we were there, I didn't even realize it at the time, but we had visited the Gundam base in Korea. I remember walking into that store and just being blown away. So I picked up the Double O Riser. I had I had watched Gundam Double O in high school, and so. It was very near and dear to my heart, and I saw the double O riser there, and I'm gonna get that, that's awesome. Because the box art on that kit is amazing. So I took that home and I snapped it up, and I was let down, to say the least. I decaled it up and everything, but it just did not look as good as I thought it would. So I didn't touch the hobby, and I didn't buy another kit until April of this year. I was scrolling through my email feed and saw this kit that you see right here, the Alicia White Pearl version. I had seen it back then, after I snap built that double O riser, but was constantly reminded of how disappointing it was, so I didn't, never got it. It was also chronically out of stock back then. So seeing this kit come across my emails just this year, brought all of those feelings back. And I realized that now, because I'm older, I have the uh, the financial wherewithal to, to do this, to go all in. So I said, okay, this is really interesting and engaging, and I haven't even built anything yet. So I did my research, scoured the YouTube, scoured all the online blog resources, Otaku Revolution, you're awesome, man. Tons of research. It's like reading a textbook. And so this kit is the culmination of that research. I did about 30 hours of research before I bought a single thing. And after I was done, looking stuff up and I felt like I knew step by step what the process would be like. I went and I bought the stuff and I bought this kit. It was the first one that I bought, but it's a rare kit. So it had to be imported from Japan and it took a long time to get here. So in the meanwhile, the first actual kit that I snap built starting this hobby over again was the Master Grade Freedom Gundam 2.0 and that was pretty cool. And then this kit arrived. So I snap built it up and it looked, well, you can see the pre-work photos, it's not pretty. It's a very ugly kit, <laughs> but that's okay because I had all my equipment and so I got to work and this is the, uh, the culmination of it. Uh, I don't know if you guys find this at all interesting. But I, I guess I'll finish the thought. So so this kit took me two, two and a half months. So we're talking logistics now. Two and a half months, so about 10 weeks, that's right. I started disassembling and then panel lining this kit beginning of May and I finished July 15th or 16th I can't remember but middle of July and uh, per week I worked 40 hours yeah I don't think I've ever done anything quite this fun before for those of you who have been who have been building and customizing already I'm, I'm sure you know I mean and there's so many great customizers out there with so much experience it's amazing but yeah the all the creators all the artists they are artists. They're just amazing, the work that they do. Now, I'm really thankful that I found this hobby. It's a great creative outlet. I love the I love the content. Mechs, man, mechs are so cool. As for the future of this channel, we're gonna go over 
the rest of the process for the kit that you see here. So I'll get those out as soon as I can. They're going to cover painting is pretty much all that's left. There was captured video of decaling and I had some tutorials planned for that. Dry brush weathering and panel lining, but all of that was lost. So next kit, we'll cover that stuff in tutorial form and, and build through form. As for follow up kits, uh, we're looking at the TR6 Hazel 2. Uh, that one's in the Titans colors. I prefer the Woundwort colors, so if we do work on that one, uh, we're going to color that one in Woundwort colors, the, the Hazel custom colors, the white, not the, not the navy, dark blue and purple. Or three different Iron-Blooded Orphans kits. I don't know why they're so cool, but they're just so appealing. Either the Grim Gertie, Julia's uh, Regan Lays, or the 1100 Gundam Vidar. I'm not going to work on Master Grades for a while. If they go anything like the Alicia here, it's going to take 400 more hours, and I'd rather get more kits done. So high grades or no grade 1100s. And yeah, the plan is for us to go through the whole build process in the hopes that those who want to get into the hobby have a resource where they can conduct their research and have everything laid out for them. That's something that would have been quite useful when first starting out in the hobby. So yeah, that's it guys. Again, thanks for, for joining me, those few of you who do, my precious subscribers. Uh, for those of you who are new, don't forget to like, leave a comment, and subscribe. And if you subscribe, be sure to make sure to activate the bell so you get new video notifications. Okay, have fun building, guys. I'll see you next time.